I am at the age that is high risk for <laughs> coronavirus. On one hand, that made it difficult for me to make this decision because the parotidectomy is considered an elective surgery. And many clinics are putting off or canceling this kind of surgeries. For the patients right now, it's pure chaos. As COVID-19 cases have been spreading statewide, elective surgeries have been canceled or postponed. Health facilities focusing on treating those with the virus. Now, certain cancer surgeries are being delayed as well. It's really frustrating if you're a patient and you have a problem that needs to get taken care of because you're just being put on hold. In my case, I was clear that I had waited for too long with the tumors and that if I waited, I could give them the chance to turn malignant. And for me, that was a more serious risk. So I decided to come right away. My name is Ryan Osborne. I train as a head and neck surgeon in South Central Los Angeles, managing the most complex cancer and trauma patients in the country. I've operated across the globe in first and third world countries. My experiences have taught me the value of flexible and innovative thinking, but I realized that our healthcare system doesn't always allow for that. So I started Osborne Head and Neck Institute, and I made it my mission to provide the best medical care for our patients. Together, we create a new standard in medicine. These are our stories. My name is Salvador Inda. I'm from Mexico, from Chihuahua City, uh, northern Mexico, about 250 miles south of El Paso, Texas. And uh, I retired five years ago, but I now work part-time as a human capital consultant. And I enjoy life. About 10 months ago, I started noticing something growing in, in this side of my face, on both sides. And at the beginning, I think, I don't know, it's probably an inflammation that will go away. As the months went by, I and my family started telling me, hey, probably you should pay more attention to that and find out what it is and what you need to do about it. So Salvador contacted us and he is, his problem is he has bilateral parotid tumors. Uh, they're pretty large based on the MRI scan that I reviewed. But the real issue is we don't know what they are. We, he had a biopsy, biopsy was non-diagnostic, so we don't know if it's benign or malignant. And normally, uh, I don't think there'd be such an urgency. We could repeat biopsies, we could try to go into further diagnostic studies. But right now we're in the middle of a very crazy time. This morning, the death toll in New York State is nearing 1,000. Hospitals are reeling with New York City's mayor warning they will run out of supplies by this weekend. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. COVID has hit, a pandemic has been declared, and the borders are shutting down. The breaking news, stay at home. That is the order tonight from four state governors as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. New York, California, Illinois, and Connecticut all ordering non-essential employees to stay home. Those orders cover 75 million people across the United States. This is really a big deal. He's trying to make sure that he gets taken care of and he's willing to drive cross borders, you know, travel during the pandemic when we, we don't really know, you know, how to take care of ourselves right now. And um, there's no treatment and he's putting himself at risk. We had that consultation about a week ago as we were receiving news that the coronavirus cases, the number of cases in the U.S. and especially in California were rising every day, as well as the number of deaths coming from this virus. So I was in a dilemma. I could put off my surgery for a later date and during that time, uh, these tumors will continue growing with the possibility of turning malignant. 
I finally decided to come right away uh, and to come driving. This pandemic is polarizing. It's almost drawn a line in the sand in the medical community. We're listening to the leaders in the country, the CDC, and they're telling us stop elective surgery, reroute resources for the potential influx of COVID patients. That makes total sense. But just canceling elective surgeries blanketly, that does not. There are many patients who have tumors growing where the biopsy is non-diagnostic. I don't know that this is benign or malignant, but they're all going to be classified as elective at that point. As an oncologic surgeon, I know that the difference between curable and incurable can occur in six months. So how do I make the decision to just cancel elective surgery? I can't. This is our 9-11. This is why we need to stay open, continue to take care of patients, despite the fact that we might be putting ourselves in harm's way. But if we don't do it, who's going to do it? And I guess hindsight will determine if we've made the right decision. So we're getting ready to start Salvador's first surgery. We're going to be taking out the largest side first. His request on the left side, that's the side that's probably going to give us the most difficulty and uh, have the highest risk of temporary paralysis. But by dealing with the difficult one first, we'll also learn the most about his anatomy. And hopefully that'll help us on the second side move through it that much smoother and with a lower risk complication. Here you can see um, that once he's lying flat on the table, the, the size of the tumor is much more evident and pronounced. Uh, the overlying skin is um, slightly discolored just from the, the, the tension uh, on the vasculature of the skin. And uh, once we actually remove this tumor, you'll see that color and just general topography go back to normal. Uh, things will look significantly different when the surgery is over.
The first case I showed that his gland was full of a lot of cystic pockets of mucinous, almost pus-like material, but the nerves were pretty good size caliber, although his nerves were very deep. I'm expecting it to be the same, but hopefully just a little less uh, involved since this size, is, this size is a little bit smaller. So we'll see. I feel good that it is over. I think it it is it was for me a very difficult uh, situation. Uh, uh, this is the first surgery, important surgery that I have on on myself on my body, and also with the potential concern that it could have some impact on the facial nerve and the potential concern of the outcome of the pathology. It, it was, it was not easy. Okay. Are you able to sign that out? Yep, that, that I sent over yesterday. That was a pathologist. And you remember when I was telling you there's only one type of cancer that is potential the lymphoma. lymphoma that's what you have mm -hmm. it's a it's a b-cell lymphoma uh, they picked it up off of this one mm -hmm. um, it's going to be the same on this side mm -hmm. uh, that treatment is not traditionally treated with surgery mm -hmm. um, so you do not need any more surgery mm -hmm. um, but you are going to probably need to see a what we call a hemonc doctor. I I really think we did the right thing and we did it at the right time. Having waited longer it could have meant that the cancer developed further and go to other places. Um, it's a good thing that I had the surgery because otherwise 
you would there know. wouldn't be enough tissue to, to no. find that out, right? No. Most patients who are diagnosed with a parotid tumor will ultimately find out that their disease is benign. And when I say most, I mean about 85%. Unfortunately, Salvador fell into that other group, that smaller group that is unfortunately diagnosed with a malignancy. I wish it would be non-malignant, but since, but I was prepared also to the possibility of it being malignant. And based on that coming to being the truth, I'm glad I came as soon as I came, because then I, I'm feeling that I'm doing that I'm doing what I can to, to battle, to give a good fight. And while, yes, that's not the, the news that we wanted to hear, on another side, if you look at it, we're very grateful that he actually knows. Uh, he can at least now move forward and start his adjuvant therapy and, uh, and move towards trying to eradicate this disease completely. Had he not come, had he not had the courage to cross the border during this pandemic, he would not have known. And we don't know how long this, this delay would have lasted. This, it could be two years before he would have found out that he was actually harboring a cancer. So I think his chances of overall cure are going to be excellent because he's had the surgery. He can move on to his adjuvant therapy and uh, our prayers are going to be with him.